Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video we will be doing a quick run through of the 4th Armor of a Forger dev blog. This dev blog focused on the new update, 0.9.5.73, and their plans for the future. So with really no more delay, let's just get right into this. Alrighty, so we should quickly cover what was added in update 5 or update 0.9.5.73 that released on the 15th for Steam and the 16th for Xbox. Starting off, they fixed a bug that emerged with the last update that caused base call signs to be randomized, meaning they should now be the same for everyone. Now moving over to crash fixes, the game will no longer crash when finalizing connections while they are being established. They will no longer crash due to AI movement, no longer crash due to some animations, it will no longer crash when scrolling the workshop while installing a mod, will no longer crash due to using the call identity dot get full name command and it, in the workshop crashes after disabling a hidden entity resetting a widget slot opening a workbench and deleting a point all have been fixed next we have vehicle changes vehicle turret and vehicle inventory slots can no longer be dragged and dropped and they push to fix the damaged state of vehicles the btr 70 and the euro gear shifting has been changed slightly they also added a wreck model for various vehicles, as well as static models of those various wrecked vehicles around the map. Then shifting over to radio changes, they hinted at these in the last dev blog, but now they're here. Enemy direct speech will no longer have a UI that is visible on your screen. Receiving audio from a second radio while transmitting to the platoon channel will not result in you hearing yourself anymore. And the radio hint has been removed. In terms of gunplay, this update doesn't really have a large amount of changes. However, they lowered the speed it takes to ADS, and they lowered the speed it takes to throw all grenades. Modding also got a slight tweak in this update. First, they fixed a bug that would make mod checking not work correctly, and they fixed a bug that was causing mods to not show that an update was available unless an user attempted to open it or use it. They also changed it so that way the workshop will no longer get stuck if opened and closed in quick succession. Server browsing also got a slight tweak, as the server browser will no longer get stuck on the add-on download screen if you try and install a newer version of an add-on for a server in particular. And the browser cache will no longer get randomly corrupted. AI also got a minor tweak with this update with them receiving a minor memory allocation optimization for AI perception, and default character animations will now be a bit different so people don't really look like clones as soon as they spawn. In other general changes, they fixed the binding of mouse buttons, they fixed the position of ladders on some churches, some collision in certain walls, some incorrect links to the Reforger wiki in the main menu, and they changed the keybind to drop an item from the inventory, it will now be the X key. To the less visible changes, they fixed some problems causing failure to communicate with the backend in the Infusion engine, they also fixed some script compiler issues, and added a fix that will skip unknown classes at the end of a parent scope when reading containers. In Workbench, they fixed multiple crashes related to terrain and roads. They fixed a bug that caused terrain tool in the road-flatten layer to stay active even after deleting the terrain, as well as some other fixes and tweaks with the road and terrain tool. They fixed an issue that caused an incorrect list of surface materials in some cases to occur. So really just a bunch of fixes in the Workbench and really in the entire update as a whole. That's really all I've got for you in this update, but let's just move back into what was covered on the dev blog. So they started off the dev blog with the major changes in the update, but then they moved on to what they're working on. First, they intend on temporarily lowering the number of official servers as most PC players are playing on community servers. Personally, I am sad to hear this as I mainly play on official servers, but I understand their decision. On Xbox, they are going to be adding servers for 32 players, and they would appreciate some feedback from the Xbox players regarding those servers. They will also intend on increasing the frag damage of explosives and passing a fix that will remove compression on cursor textures, allowing them to work properly and not randomly disappear. Other short-term goals they stated for the next update, they intend on stopping preview images from being cropped while using drag and drop, improving the pop-up notifications layout, size, color, transparency, and frequency, and finally an improvement to building to stop AI from blocking them, something they've been working on for the last couple updates. They also set up some long-term goals for development. First, they are working on a task system, improving its architecture so it will be easier for the modders to edit it, so we can get some mods regarding the task. Next, they wish to add a way to have multiple save slots in solo game modes like Game Master and Conflict, allowing players to save their creations and return to them in a later date. This is something I'm personally excited for as it means I will no longer have to craft something in Game Master right before playing it and you can just save it and load it up at any time. And it will possibly allow for just more general creativity in the Game Master mode in general. 
Also, moving forward, they are working on steps to allow people on Xbox to host their own modded community servers. Finally, to close out, they mentioned some known issues following this new update. First, some of the bugs they reported as fixed aren't fully fixed, only just improved. First, the reshuffling inventory bug is not actually fixed, they're working on it. Second, the update status of mods has been improved, but there are still cases where it doesn't work. Finally, they are aware of some new vehicle problems. Instead, you may see vehicles jumping dash jerking if you're not in the driver's seat, and as well as excessive dust effects and sound, and just animations in general, just not fun to be in the driver's seat, but they are working on fixing that. Really, that's all I've got for you guys today, and until next dev blog, this has been Christopher Beast. I hope to see you all 